So guys, in the previous video I've showed you how to pass an array uh, without knowing its size to a function or a function block. If you missed that one, uh, I'm going to put a link to it so you can go ahead and watch it. In today's video I'm going to show you what you can actually do when you pass an let's say, array to a function. For today's video, I've created two functions. The first one is a sorting function um, where I'm using the bubble sort method. And the second one is a um, filter function where we can filter um, a spe specific phrase, uh, a specific phrase in an array. And I'm just gonna fill a second array <coughs> with the uh, uh, words that I found. If you don't know uh, what the bubble sort does, uh, you can just go ahead and Google it, but it's pretty simple thing. So we have, let's say in this array, five, one, four, two, eight. So on the first can, we gonna find the biggest number. How it, is this done? We are going from the first element and comparing it to the second element. If the second element is smaller than the first element, they are just swapped. Uh, in the next uh, step, we're going to compare the second element with the third element. If, they're, um, if, the, second, uh, if the third element is smaller than the second element, we're just going to swap them. And so on and so on. On the first scan, we're going to find the biggest number. In the second scan, we're going to find the second biggest number. And to the end, we're going to find the smallest number. So this is my bubble function. <clears throat> For this purpose, we need two four cycles and something that I've created. This is uh, a scan variable. Uh, so I don't want to start to check the array from the beginning uh, every single time. Because as I said, on the first scan, we're going to find the uh, biggest number and it's going to be in the last element after it. So that's why I'm, let's say I have an array from 10 elements. 10 minus 0 minus 1 is 9 because we are going plus 1 and we are comparing the <coughs> element plus the 1. So that's why we should have 9. And on the second scan, as I said, on the 10th place, we're going to sort the biggest element. And on the second scan, this will be 1. So we're going to have 10 minus 1 minus 1 it's 8 so we are not just going we are not going to go to uh, the 10th element at all because we already know that it's in position so here i have a list with some uh, strings uh, with some uh, names um, of some countries and i'm gonna sort them so let me log in and i'm gonna Here are the, the names of the countries, as you can see. And I'm just going to pa pass them to one empty array here. Because they're both with 14 elements, there is not a problem to just uh, use the uh, copy constructor of codes and just copy them directly without uh, a for cycle or something like that. So now I'm going to give this destination er uh, string um, area of strings to the bubble sort. As you can see, here are some countries. They are not in order, so I can just sort them. When we pass the, um, uh, when we start execute the uh, sort function, you can see that the uh, countries are now in order. As you can see on the 13, on the 14 element, there are uh, countries that start with uh, small letters. Why are they just uh, on the at the end of the list? That's because if we open the ASCII table, you will see, let's say B has the value 89 and A has the value uh, 65. So B is definitely bigger than A. So all the <clears throat> All the uh, names of the countries that are written down with the um, start letter that it's small gonna be at the back of our list. That's the, the, the reason why. 
So this is the part function. Pretty simple. We're just um, we're just sorting the array. Of course, you can uh, change the sort direction of the bubble sort. Uh, so you can just do it like this, and you will sort the biggest element first and the smallest last. We can give it a try again, and you can see that we have the biggest element first because this is our e and e has the value 101 uh, let me restore the array again to its initial value <clears throat> now the second function what the second function does is just uh, finding finding uh, a word or a phrase into the array and copies it into a list so we're gonna sort only the functions let me show you the function <clears throat> so this function has a destination array and source array uh, a search word so from the, the source array we're gonna pass the original list and in the destination area we're gonna show all the filtered words that we found when in our search first of all I'm checking if um, the source array is equal or bigger than um, or smaller than the destination array. Because let's say if our destination array is smaller than the source array, um, and every, if we want to pass every single element from the source array to the destination array, we're gonna go out of the um, out of uh, the border. That's why the destination array should be equal or bigger than the source array. If not, I'm going to return an error. For this purpose, I've created a third function. This is a uh, function elements, which is giving me the exact size of the array. This is nothing too special. I'm passing again. I'm passing an array uh, with the star operator, checking the upper bound minus the lower bound plus one. Because let's say if we have 14 uh, in our case we have for both we have 14 elements so from 0 to 13 and from 1 to 14 so let's start from 0 to 13 here we have 13 here we have 0 that means we're going to receive 13 but we have 14 elements that's why we need plus 1 for the second case we have from 1 to 14 so 14 minus 1 is 13 plus 1 give us the 14 elements again so this function will just um, return the size of the array so how many elements do we have in the array we cannot go with size of and uh, just pass the whole array and divide it to um, element of the array because this is actually a pointer and we're gonna receive only the size of the pointer and not of the whole array that's why we cannot do um, we cannot use the size of operator in this case in this uh, if both areas are with the same uh, with the same size I'm gonna empty the list and just gonna uh, type uh, empty uh, stuff so we can uh, we can receive only the actual uh, search that we are doing of course because the arrays can have a different lower bound uh, i'm passing the lower bound of the destination array is an index here i'm just um, counting uh, every single element of the source and if i find the search word i'm gonna pass it to the destination list this is what I'm doing with the find function from CodeSys, which is a very, very simple one. So <clears throat> the find function needs two arguments. The first one is the array in which we are searching. And the second one is the uh, string. Um, oh, sorry. The first one is a string that we are searching. And the second one is the searched string. So if we have the, uh, if we find the searched string in the uh, first string, we're gonna receive the position of the beginning of this uh, string. And as I said, I'm just gonna pass them to the destination list. 
if uh, my search is empty, I'm going to return the um, original list to the destination array. So let's give this function a try. As you remember, here is our source. It looks like this. So now I'm going to, I can sort it one, uh, no, the destination, I mean. I can sort it one more time. Now it's sorted and I don't want to, I want to find, let's say, Y, a Y in every, in my list. So I'm going to start the sort. And as you can see, my destination list is filled with every single country or every single string that has a Y in it. We can, uh, let's say, um, search from for ri. So if I execute the function, we're going to receive Brazil, France, uh, Andorra. If I pass an empty search, we're going to receive our original list because here I have the source list. So pretty simple what the function actually does as well. So this function receives two arrays from the same size as an input. That's probably not the optimal case uh, how we can do that. Codices uh, has the new and delete operators, which are used to um, reserve a dynamic memory on the heap. So in the next video, I'm going to use the new and delete operators to optimize this function, or I'm going to create actually a function block. And <clears throat> with the new and delete, I'm going to create an array and I'm just going to pass only one array to the function and sort it. So I can show you how the, these those operators work. So guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, what you can do actually with, uh, oh, with when you pass an array uh, to a function or a function block. Um, I'm showing this because mainly when you have a, a program list, the client wants to sort it. So that's one of the ways how you can sort your lists uh, and visualize them. Thank you for watching guys. And if you have some questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Have a good one.